life, I am going to shamelessly jump on the bandwagon here um, and discuss something that's already been discussed by a couple of really, really good YouTubers, including Paul Hibbert from Hibbert Home Tech and Brian from Automate Your Life, both of whom I'd highly recommend that you check out and subscribe. Their videos are absolutely amazing um, and heavily inspired me to create this channel. So both of them have talked in the last couple of weeks about a service which I have recommended before called If This Then That or IFTTT. So if you're not familiar with IFTTT, IFTTT basically lets you connect all your smart uh, home devices and your accounts for those devices onto one web or app based platform called IFTTT. And the idea is you connect all these accounts, you connect all your devices, and this lets you create routines between devices that would ordinarily not be connected. So for example, you could have it set up so, so that um, when one of your cameras detects motion, um, an email is automatically sent to your Gmail account, or you could set it so that when a smart plug is turned off, something else in another room is turned on. Um, so IFTTT, is hugely powerful. It's been an amazing tool for creating automations, routines and whatever else in my smart apartment over the last couple of years, but it's got problems. Um, and the problem is this, that some of the bigger manufacturers are actually pulling their products and services from the IFTT platform, making it less useful. So this isn't good. So before what I was able to do, for example, was add my, say a smart plug like this um, and set up a routine through the IFTT platform that when this did something, this thing over here did something else. And that was really, really cool. When IFTT first started what they did was they actually created these um, connections using the manufacturers API's in order to encourage users to use the IFTT platform and then eventually what they did was they started charging the manufacturers to keep their products and services on the IFTT platform hoping that there'd be enough users that the manufacturers would naturally go yes Unfortunately, they're not. Um, a lot of the manufacturers are starting to go, well, actually we want to create our own routines, connections, automations, or we just don't want to pay to have our devices and our API on your platform, so they're starting to pull them off. Most notably of, of late um, is a company called Toya, which um, controls all the smart life devices. So I've talked about smart life devices. Smart life is kind of like an open, um, playground or sandbox for lots of different companies to make smart devices using the Toya Smart Life kind of ecosystem um, and, and framework to create devices and all be controlled via, via one app. So this one Smart Life app controls hundreds upon hundreds of different devices from lots of different manufacturers and Toya have recently decided to pull the support for IFTTT. What this means is if you have any devices from these manufacturers that support smart life you can no longer automate them or set up routines on IFTTT that's bad the other big one that started to do this as well is Google. So I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that Google, if you have Nest products, are getting you to move your Nest account to a Google account, a Google Home account or a Google Nest account. Um, and this has its advantages. It's, it's Google kind of cleaning house and, and amalgamating everything into one. But what it does mean is that Google are pulling some of the services from IFTTT also. So if you have automation set up with say Nest thermostats or Nest cameras, Cameras, these are also not going to work once you move your Nest devices to a Google account. So this is not a good thing and it's become a bit of a challenge with some of the automations that I have set up around my apartment. I'd still highly recommend checking out IFTTT, um, but this is going to lead to problems for people wanting to use the platform for smart home automations in the future. So what's the solution here? Well, IFTTT is not the only service that you can use. However, it was the most comprehensive. When you go onto IFTT, the range of products, services, and devices um, that it supported was absolutely massive. But now that some of these big players are starting to move away, it does lessen the value of the IFTT IFTTT um, platform um, and this means that you kind of have to move back towards the manufacturer's own automation and routines. One thing I have done is I have moved a lot of devices to the Samsung SmartThings app um, because what I have found is that the Samsung SmartThings app is starting to support quite a lot of other manufacturers devices and I can set up certain automations and certain routines there. I've also then gone back to my Amazon Echo app for the herself. 
or the voice assistant, the app for that, um, and done some more routines in there because as she recognizes and can control more and more smart home devices, she can also create routines um, inside uh, the app as well to control them. The downside is that the majority of the routines there rely on something actually being triggered by the Amazon Echo devices or by the app itself. The advantage of IFTTT was that you could have two completely um, non-connected services talk to each other. So for example, my new key smart lock, when it was opened, could potentially send a message to a smart plug I had somewhere in the apartment to tell it to turn on at certain times. Um, or I could set up an away system whereby when I put on, um, a button or clicked a, a command in IFTTT, it configured lots of different devices around my apartment for kind of like an alarm system where I'm out of house um, and trigger automatic lights, lock the doors, that sort of thing. So this is disappointing. It's not completely unexpected though. I have been kind of anticipating this. Um, and as I said, some of the other YouTubers that I've discussed go into a lot more detail as to why this has happened. So in the meantime, I am gonna look out for other services that can do the same thing as IFTTT. There were ones in the past, but they've kind of gone uh, away because of the same reasons as the struggles that IFTTT are having right now. Um, but I will keep you posted. If you are using IFTT, it's a good idea to log in now and just see if any of the services or any of the connections that you've created are now no longer available. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give this channel an old like and subscribe. Um, and I'll be back next week with some more updates on some more positive stuff, hopefully. Um, but I just thought it was a good idea to kind of discuss this as it is something that's uh, very much being talked about by other YouTubers at the moment. Uh, other than that, all that's left to say is bye-bye for now.